Oh, now we stop. Om Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kansa Chanura Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagad Gurum In the thirteenth verse of this fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna spoke about Chatur Varnyam, Brahmana Kshatriya Vaishya Shudra, and the commentary that I made or I gave talks about the diversity in creation. Sri Krishna says, I created it, Maya Shrishtam. And in the second half of the shloka, number 13, he makes an interesting comment. Tasya kartaram api maam vidhi akartaram. Though I am the maker of it all, please know me to be a non-doer. That is possible only with the highest spiritual wisdom. In that sense, you and I also can be active in the world and yet enjoy a quietude, an incomparable, great quietude within if we do not have personal attachments. When we have personal attachments, even if we are doing just a little work every day, we can fret and fume. Little is our profit, a little is our loss, a little is our interaction with people, and yet we could be very tired. Whereas there are people in this very world who preside over huge turnovers or meet thousands and thousands of people, handle mega projects, travel all over the world, and yet remain serene, quiet. So you and I have a bit of Sri Krishna in us already. What is in him is in us too. But we need to rise, we need to grow spiritually to claim the fullness of that freedom, of that liberty. So, Lord Krishna serves or says these words that serve two purposes. One he is he endorses the diversity and in no way he actually makes a case for any exploitation that is the selfishness in each varna that leads to either promoting exploitation or promoting being exploited. Those who give bribe and those who take bribe to give an analogy are both at fault. Here we are continuing in the 14th verse Bhagavan Sri Krishna says Namam karmani limpanti name karma phale spraha iti maam yo bhijanati karma bhir nasabadhyate and further, evam dnatva kritam karma purvai rapi mumukshubhi kuru karma ivatasmatvam purvai purvataram kritam. He already said, I am not a doer, akartaram, I am na karta. In addition, he says, no action that seems to be happening at my hands can bind me. Limpanti, lepa, means something that sticks to us. You open a jackfruit, the waxy substance in the jackfruit comes all over your hands, it's so difficult to remove it. If you apply typically coconut oil to your hands and then remove the eatable portions of the jackfruit after cutting it into two or four pieces. 
your hands do not get that waxy substance sticking to it all over likewise karma yoga and its own culmination is nana brahma jnana can free us from any stress any guilt any pride any shame any regrets etc which are what we call bondage that is lepa name karma nilimpanti name karma phale spraha how beautiful i do not desire to get anything i do not want anything iti maam yah abhijanati whoever knows this karma bihi nasabadhyate from the advaita perspective this is a line which indeed points to oneness of man and god to know god is to partake of god's nature god's innate freedom not to know god is not to know oneself too in the advaita self knowledge self realization on one hand and god knowledge god realization on the other walk hand in hand the day you know god you know who you are the day you know who you are you know god we may say shankara acharya says karmani na limpanti has the special significance that all that i do do not impose on me the need to be born in a body deha arambhakatvena karmani na mam limpanti ahankara abhavat the bhashya because right at the time of doing itself there is no sense of aham karomi i am doing in the case of ignorant people like us while doing also we get overwhelmed by the idea of what a big job we are doing or what a useless job has come to me and why should i do this when all others are having uh, much better responsibilities better pay check better designation etc why am i made to do do this unimportant things so much of agitation even when we are doing and later on also we look back and feel proud or feel low about what we did in the last few days few months or whatever that is called ahankara how wonderful and how mind blowing it is that in right spiritual wisdom it's possible for us to do and yet be a non doer within us nacha karma nam phale mama spraha spraha is trishna seeking wanting in karma yoga itself that wanting the result wanting recognition wanting praise that kind of stuff is let go of in nana i wouldn't say nana yoga nana yoga has its stages but in parama jnana in the highest wisdom one has very naturally absence of desires name karma phalas praha samsare naam tu for worldly people aham karta iti abhimanah pride and then tat phaleshu karma naam phaleshu spraha cha bhavanti eva and lord shri krishna is different and therefore namam karmani limpanti and emphasize he emphasizes iti maam yo bi janati whoever knows me in this way is further emphasized by the 15 in times of uh, good old times purva purvaihi lot of wise people have come and gone mumukshu bihi lot of people who are very passionate about liberation in this kali yuga also a whole lot of us study the vedanta 
but probability is one in a thousand who really is passionate, who really wants liberation. Mumukshus are very few. People come to Vedanta, people study, people memorize Gita or Viveka Chodamani, etc. with some kind of taste for good literature or maybe it gives them its own on one hand res- respectability on the other their conscience is at peace nowadays i have become spiritual how i chant so many shlokas shiva shiva it is good to chant shlokas but true spirituality is much beyond reciting shlokas go further explaining the 15th verse Sri Shankaracharya says, Evam Jnatva, knowing that karma happens on the level of Indriyas, Antakarana, etc., everyone really in one's Swarupa is Akarta. Jnatva means having known in this way, Atikrantaihi Mumukshubihi, seekers after liberation of past, did work with this spirit. Therefore, you also please act. Adi Shankara very explicitly says, Na tushnim asanam. Detachment doesn't mean you keep quiet, you be still, you remain aloof, you don't involve in any work. You say, I am spiritually evolved and don't expect me to do any work here onwards, etc. No. Arjuna, that is to be avoided carefully. Na tushnim asanam. Tushnim means remaining idle. Na api sanyasaha kartavya. On one extreme, people renounce. On this extreme, people idle away. Do neither be idle nor be, you know, nor think that you, can, you are ready for sanyasa. You belong to the realm of karma yoga. Tasmatvam purvairapi anushti tattvat With those shining examples of wise people of the past, you must stay active. Yadi anatmajnaha tvam tada atmashudhyartam Suppose you have no idea, no foggy idea of what this whole self-knowledge is, then you know what? You must work for purification. Tattva vidchet, if you say or if some of us say, no, no, we have attended a lot of Vedanta and reflected and got great clarity. Why should we work? We will only study and we will only contemplate. No, loka sangrahartam, we too must work, true to our swadharma, true to our inner voice. We should not suppress the inner voice which may say, I must help this man, I, I must help this lady, and so on. Purvaihi janakadi bihi purvataram kritam. Who are those wise people of the past? Adi Shankara here gives the word janaka. Sri Krishna himself uses the word janaka elsewhere, but Sri, um, in this shloka, Lord Krishna doesn't say janaka's name. Now comes Another pair of verses where in a great artistic manner Lord Krishna makes a distinction between what is actually action and what is apparently action but really inaction. So we have 16 and 17. Kim karma kima karmeti Kavayo Pyatra Mohita Tate Karma Pravakshami Yadnatva Moksha Se Ashubhat Karma no Yapi Bodhavyam Bodhavyan Chabi Karmanaha Akarmanascha Bodhavyam Gahana Karma no Gatihi each verse is so thought-provoking. Sri Krishna says, in this world, superficially, everybody is so active, running from here to there, and there to here, but most people are 
so confused. What is real action? What is mere activity? What is a mere movement of limbs or even movement of the brain, movement of thought, <laughs> not leading anywhere, not truly meaningful from a spiritual point of view, which is akarma, kim karma, kim akarma, iti kavayaha api. Kavayaha here means learned people, scholarly people, mohita, deluded, confused. Therefore, Arjuna, tat, tat means tasma. Therefore, te to you, karma pravakshyami. Why are you telling me? What is the context? Arjuna, you are looking for resolution of conflict in your bosom. You are looking for freedom from all sense of being trapped and caught. A bee caught in a little box goes on flying within that box and hits against the six walls of the box but gets injured, gets tired. We too, when we are in the avidya bhumi, in the realm of ignorance, do so much of work, we sweat and toil, we move heaven and earth, we go from pillar to post, as idioms after idioms come in my mind, we leave no stone unturned for achieving a certain goal, but at the end of it all, oh, we are so tired, we are not mukta, we can't say I am now free of any headache. Many a time you solve one problem only to make way for another. Therefore people sometimes say with some irony in their voice, with some kind of negative feeling, I don't know whether this is end of a problem or the beginning of a bigger problem. It's very confusing. People confess. Mo Arjuna Moksha said, I want you to be liberated. The word Kavayaha is used in the shloka proper. Sri Krishna has used that word. Sri Shankaracharya says, Kavayaha means Medhavinaha Api. Karmadi Vishaye Moham Gataha. I shall tell you and you will be Ashubhat, you will be freed from all that is inauspicious. Ashubhat, Sansarat, this worldly life is full of inauspiciousness. It looks good here and there, but scratch the surface, it is a womb of endless problems. And in the last verse which we shall see in this short class, the 17th shloka, Bhagavan Sri Krishna says, everyone on the earth should develop clarity, should know what? Karma, Karmanaha Bodhavyam. One must know about what karma is. Bodhavyancha Vikarmanaha. Bodhavyam means one ought to know. Something has to be known. In the same sloka, Bhagavan uses the word bodhavyam three times. Akarma nascha bodhavyam. Oh, 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 oh. I must know karma. I must know vikarma. I must know akarma. Krishna, what are these? Sri Shankaracharya explains. Karma is shastra vihita. What really ought to be done? By doing which my vasanas reduce by doing which my colored perception goes away. What is right action by doing which my ragadvesha come down? That is karma. Whereas vikarma is pratishiddha. What should not be done even in one's dream, but because of kamakrodha, because of vasanas, we end up doing pratishiddha karma. That's called vikarma. Akarma nascha bodhavyam. Some people neither do what is to be done, nor do things opposed to the Shastra, 
but idle away tushnim bhav so where exactly someone is idling because even idling may not be explicit outwardly somebody may be very active but if you get close <laughs> you would find he or she is really just passing time putting up a show of being busy being busy doing nothing that's what they say trishu api bodhavyam therefore gahana gahana means deep profound or inscrutable difficult to figure out what is going on this world is so perplexing the world is so confusing the world is so confounding we see somebody else and imagine she is happy that person meanwhile is looking at us and wondering how we are so happy and she is not who really is happy whose life has actually been truly meaningful bhagwan jane as they say god knows therefore gahana karmanah karmadinam do the word used is karmanah gati the way of karma is hard to know actually karmanah akarmanah vikarmanascha therefore adi shankara says karma adinam karma akarma vikarma vikarmanam gati yatatmyam tatvam gahana or understanding them is difficult gati gahana so yatatmyam means what is the essence of a truly praiseworthy work some action which brings us name and fame shall we say that is the karma scriptures the spiritual science doesn't care about name and fame spiritual science doesn't measure karma by outward appearances popularity or wealth gained mm-hmm. somebody may be unknown as the famous example is given typically of a flower that hides be by behind a leaf and gives out fragrance a passer by below the tree looks for where that flower could be i am getting such fragrance where is that pushpam he cannot see but he gets the fragrance wise people mature poets people of refined intellect have always prayed god please o oh lord make me like a vana suma vana is forest suma is flower let me be like a vana suma being behind a patra leaf let me give fragrance but let me not be known let people not know that i have done that i would like to do good works but not run after go after any credit to say that from one's heart one must have come a long way in spiritual evolution on the path of spiritual journey thus gahana karmano gati therefore it is said in the next shloka that true wisdom lies in seeing karma sometimes in akarma somebody is sitting quiet the whole town thinks that this person sitting quiet is a burden on the society they are angry with him or her but wise people probably we don't know everybody sitting quiet may not be doing work but once in a while somebody sitting quiet is actually doing more than people running around one some gandhians came and asked ramana maharshi oh maharshi you seem to have great influence on people as is evident from the number of devotees who come here from different walks of life many of them in senior positions coveted positions in the society 
and we feel sad that you are just sitting here all the time somebody like you who has such power to influence should go around and work they said maharshi why don't you work and maharshi very typical of him said to them how do you know that i do not work how do you know that i am sitting quietly they were shocked but when they stayed for a few days they themselves realized they got such peace in the proximity in the vicinity being near brahmana maharshi they did not get that peace even when they went to the himalayas even when they went to you know some beautiful resort five star resort with beautiful everything beautiful nice swimming pool nice facilities good food music dance etc <laughs> one doesn't get peace but in the company being near a mahatma one gets supreme peace therefore look at what gita is helping us realize so through a proper study of the gita the world is the same but we understand the world rightly without a proper understanding of gita so certain things would have attracted us looking at certain things which others possess we might have felt jealous we might have labeled ourselves as a failure in life but with the study of gita those objects those possessions do not make us jealous and we'll never make the mistake of looking down at ourselves on the contrary we take note of what there is to learn from anybody we learn we are grateful for all the opportunities to learn that we get in this world in this mad mad world there is all the time self education possible our life is meant for self education we must learn by ourselves about ourselves why what for to go towards the highest self realization thus bhagavad gita is meant for constantly clearing our understanding sometimes some books are titled bhagavad gita for daily life bhagavad gita for daily living and so on i appreciate those titles such booked titles but i must add really speaking that bhagavad gita for daily living you know that title that for daily living is redundant it is like saying a crow black in color came flying crows are always black it is like saying i was holding a glass of milk white in color does milk come in blue and green or yellow color unless you put some badam put you know those things simple milk is always white like that bhagavad gita is for daily living even if you are in the himalayas you study gita to look at whatever is around you to look at yourself in the coming day with clearer eyes for you could make the same mistake even in the himalayas being engulfed in regrets being surrounded by worries immersing yourself drowning in anxiety and low self esteem all kinds of negativities can come and fill you even if you are at an ashram in hardwar rishikesh uttarkashi or anywhere else whereas with the gita studying gita and reflecting on it and working on oneself we must work on ourselves we must not study the gita to like you lectures or to write articles or to go around saying i am a scholar of vedanta alas that would be a tragedy 
so gita for daily living is in a sense a redundant expression gita is for daily living but i do appreciate such titles you know why lot of people unless the title says it in explicit ways may not know it therefore say it say it loudly here is a gita this commentary by me the author wants to say which doesn't throw concepts at you which doesn't make you a walking encyclopedia of conceptual knowledge on the contrary here is a gita where i am trying i have attempted to share with you such understanding whereby your daily life improves in quality in this way uh, i will not enter the 18th verse at this time uh, i am actually tra- traveling and because of certain travel constraints i would seek your permission to close this lecture at this point just about 32 minutes may i say you have more time in this session for your own reflection to work on yourself perhaps that could be the way to use the allotted time in a wise mature manner we are so happy that here is bhagavad gita in our hands there is no way to fully pay the debt that you owe towards the rishis towards vyasa towards shri krishna om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namah paramarshibhyo namah paramarshibhya namo stute vyasa vishal buddhe kullar vindayata patra netra yena tvaya bharata taila purnah प्रज्वालितो ज्ञानमय प्रदीपः नमः व्यासाय विष्णुरूपाय महर्षये हरि ओम ओम शांति शांति शांति